Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. In this week's video, we're talking night vision in EMS. So as always guys, before we get started, there's a couple things I wanna address right out of the gate because I know there's gonna be a lot of people with uh, different opinions than me in this space. No one in EMS, save helicopter, paramedics, people in the HEMS industry needs night vision. This is not a need. This is something that can enhance certain operations in certain aspects of the job, but this is not something that every ambulance paramedic in a city needs to be rolling around with a PVS-14 monocular. So I'm gonna get that out of the way, but I do wanna talk about some of the benefits to night vision and some of the aspects of the job that it can benefit you as a paramedic or an EMT in a couple different special operations roles uh, within civilian EMS. Second thing we need to talk about really quick is that this PVS-14, this night vision monocular was supplied by ATN Corporation. They're a night vision company out of California, make a very high-end product, really good tubes and housing. So if you're interested in picking up night vision, you can pick it up at the link down below. So a little bit of background on night vision and looking at devices. There is not one device that's gonna work for everybody. Generally speaking, cry once, buy once. Like I said, they are expensive units. If you want one and you want one for private use, not being supplied by an employer, then you're going to spend a little bit of money. This PVS-14 runs about $3,000, and that's pretty market value for just about any high-end manufacturer. Now, it's deceptively complicated because the housing of this is a PVS-14, but then you have the tubes that are actually the night vision portion of this housing, and those can come in a couple different generations. So you have generation one, two, and three. Now, generally speaking, the jump between generation one and generation two is the largest in technology. Generation two to generation three is a little bit smaller, but what you'll find is that in the generation three as opposed to the two, it requires a lot less of the IR illuminators that come on a lot of these or uh, handheld IR flashlights or helmet mounted, whatever you have. So if you're doing this professionally and this is something you need for professional work, I would say go with the highest you can get. The th generation three, I think they have like a three plus as well, but I would go as high as you can. If you're looking at night vision as a hobby or something to just get into, something that's really cool, I mean, myself included, I think these are pretty awesome, uh, Generation 2 will serve you well. What I have in front of you is a Generation 3 PVS-14. PVS-14 housing is some of the more versatile on the market. Uh, you can turn these into binoculars or just have the monocular like I have. Now, there's some controversy between going with binoculars or monocular. Uh, I would have dual tubes if I could, but I cannot afford that. So we've gone with a monocular for what I'm using. Now, getting into kind of the point of this video is that what is the application of night vision in EMS? We know, you know, military uses these. Awesome. You know, law enforcement may be a little bit more controversial, but generally speaking, it's something that's accepted as a, a useful tool in their industry. For EMS, it's a bit more nuanced. Now, first and foremost, our TEMS team, our tactical EMS team, does have the capability of using night vision. But the problem is, is that the law enforcement agencies that we deploy with are the ones that supply it to us on a mission-specific basis. So if they're doing a manhunt through the woods or if they're doing a night approach, they're going to give us night vision to put on our helmets or to use as handheld monoculars. The problem with that is, is that this isn't plug and play. You don't just put this on and become functional with night vision, you need some training. So because I kind of already brought it up, we're gonna talk about TEMS application first. Now what I'll tell you is that if you're a law enforcement agency that you attach to, or if you're a SWAT medic, and the law enforcement agency uses night vision goggles, you should have the same capability. If they're on a manhunt, they're hiking through the woods, you're attached with them, you don't wanna be the one with white light because that is giving you away and taking away the advantage of night vision, which is, after all, allowing you to see without providing your suspect or enemy from being able to see you and target you. That's the whole point of night vision in the tactical environment. So if you're working with these guys, you should have the capability of having night vision of some kind. So moving on to the search and rescue application of night vision goggles. 
These will not always be used in search and rescue simply because having the victim be able to see you with your white lights is very important because they can call out to you, they can help find your position. So we don't wanna have a search and rescue team walking through the woods with night vision on all the time. It's not going to work very well. That being said, when you're in the woods or wherever you are on a mountain, when you have a white light, you can only see what that light is shining on directly. With night vision, you can actually see the entire landscape in its entirety. So if you have an incapacitated victim, it does raise the likelihood of actually being able to see them in a really dark environment. These can be used in conjunction with white light. It's not super recommended for a long period of time, but you can do it. And then these can be had handheld units to periodically hold up to your eye and scan. I will say that there are a couple great videos online. Uh, you have a search and rescue team in a helicopter and they show you the video before and after while they're looking through the night vision what the hiker's headlamp looks like versus what it looks like without the night vision. And I did the same test and found that you can really see other people's white light much better with night vision goggles than you can without. So I do think this has application uh, in the search and rescue, but like anything, it's a tool. It's not gonna be useful 100% of the time, and but it does have certain applications in that realm. Now, lastly, I wanna talk about HEM, so helicopter EMS. This is where night vision is a must. Almost every helicopter EMS agency in the state now is required to have night vision goggles. They're usually using dual tubes on board, and that's to help them, one, see any obstructions while they're landing. They can see telephone poles much better. They can see uh, all sorts of other hazards and obstructions along with terrain while, while they're in straight line flight. The other aspect is kind of what we just talked about. If they're searching for something, they're looking for the one ambulance with its flashing lights, you can actually pick that up a lot better with night vision goggles than you can without. So there is definitely application in the HEMS industry and now it's a requirement uh, for almost every single one. Now for my own practice, like I said, night vision is not something I'm breaking out and using hardly at all in the professional environment, just because the rest of the team's not using it and if everybody has white light on, it doesn't really make a ton of sense to have your night vision monocular uh, on and ready to go. That being said, it's something I do carry in my bag so I can break it out and use it if need be. Generally speaking, I have just a white light on the front of my helmet to be able to see who I'm working on or the path I'm hiking on. And really, the two helmets that I'm using, which I'll go through a complete build out of this guy here, are going to be the Team Wendy Exfil SAR helmet, which can accept the night vision monocular on it, and that will be for the search and rescue applications, but it can also take the white light as well on the front. And then I'm using the Team Wendy uh, Exfil Ballistic helmet here, so both of these can accept the night vision goggles, but can also just take the headlamp, put it on the front and call that good. Like I said at the beginning of this video, night vision is not something you need on a TEMS team or SAR team. It's not even you know second, third, fourth, 20th on the list of your must haves for equipment. That being said, it can supplement what you are able to do as a special operations team and give you just one more capability to bring to the table. If you have any questions about night vision or anything I talked about in this video or you disagree with the point I made, please leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next time.